Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Nerdarchist Ryan, and today I'm joined by... Nerdarchist Ted. Nerdarchist Dave. Nathan Nerdark. And how do you make the campaign end epically after, ever after? If you have a GM911, you can submit those to us over at nerdarchy at gmail.com. We also take your viewer suggestions over there. Down in the description below, you can find the original GM911 question. Uh, Damon had sent us an email and basically, his characters are now epic level. We don't know what exactly level that is, but there's five of them. It's a well-balanced party. And right now, they eat liches for lunch. Uh, they they break bread with dragons. They and, bully death knights. And yeah. they bully death knights and they pretty much. De beholders in the eyes. What he wants to know, he's like, he wants to end this campaign before the campaign ends. Before it ends you. The question is, how does he come up with a big climatic ending to this campaign? Well, when we were re reading uh, the, the email from Damien, you know, Ryan was like, existential threats. Yeah. You, you need to have something that's so big that it threatens the, the, the crust of the world itself. Yeah, it might not even be statable. It's so big is what I would go for. Because, of, I mean, they probably have killed everything through just hit point damage previously, mm -hmm. so... It's no big deal to just hit point damage something else to death as epic level characters. So the, the Tarrasque is pretty much the biggest monster in the basic monster manual for 5th edition. And, you know, you recently ran a, ran a game and you've been a, a player fighting against one as well. And yeah. you didn't feel entirely threatened. So, like, if, you, if you're if you a fully kitted out 20th level character and have a party of 20th level characters, a Tarrasque is kind of a joke encounter, but funny enough, like, when you have three PCs of 17th level, because of actual economies, the Tarrasque mauls, the, um, mauls that lower level thing. So, it's somewhere between those things that you find the magic. Also, too, when I ran the, the 17th level uh, game, there was also uh, some orcs who were better than the baseline baseline orc. Well, it was like a few orc war chiefs and and, and uh, orc shaman. Be if you had uh, something Tarrasque level and then maybe a half dozen to a dozen better orcs, it could be a pretty strong encounter. But it it's basically we don't know how well kitted out the party is because if they all have legendary weapons and like a full array of sweet magic items that are s useful, we don't know how much work you have to do to challenge them. Basically, but here's what we do know: yeah. do not use a solo monster. Yeah, solo monsters get tramped upon every time. Trampled, yeah, so you're better off, you know, using you know maybe. A Several, well, legendary in this edition. Several legendary monsters. Or, or a legendary and, like, a, a support unit of, of something else that, like, are loyalists to it. Cultists or whatever. I, I always find challenging, you know, lar larger groups to be an issue. So if you have a way to have something else on the battlefield, even if it doesn't count as a monster, but something that is using an action. Like layer actions. Like layer actions. In my most recent game... The, the players were fighting a uh, death tyrant. Now, if I use a death tyrant straight out of the book, based on the fact that there are seven players in the game, the, the numbers are just going to stack up bad against the beholder. Action economy. It, yeah. yeah. So I actually gave it extra lair actions and then had a magical effect that wound up doing something as well. So every time the players were going, I was doing something in between their turns and it slowly whittled away i felt that or from the conversations afterwards you guys told me that you felt challenged i felt that i was doing a, a decent job putting a credible threat out there and that's kind of what you have to have to do if you've got things happening in between every player's turn then the players are, are going to be fighting against that cusp and they want to make sure they can do everything they can before they get pushed over the edge so i have an idea just off the cuff here so you have a Cthulhu-type threat, an elder god that is trying to break into this world. Well, then you have a cabal of, I don't care if they're dragons, liches, archmages, or whatever, that are basically trying to bring him in. And, and the, the objective is actually to defeat his minions and stop the ritual. Yeah, like maybe they're like lesser avatars or something. Yeah. Well, one of the things you could do is, on each turn, have this elder being reach into the world and have some impact, have an effect. Do something, you know horrific and brutal to your player characters and they have no ability to affect it back destroy mm. something they like <laughs> <laughs> well that could very well be it you know perhaps this is happening in the center of a giant battlefield 
and you know this creature just you know reaches into this world one swipe of its claw paw wipes out a quarter of the army that's backing them up and still does damage to the players somehow as well you know really thematic you know make them make saving throws make them suffer effects or damage make it really impactful and terrifying for them to actually for this thing to come into the world because here's the thing if it can't if it if in theory it doesn't actually ever really come into the world and they have no way to really affect it back it's going to be super scary because really all it is is a hazard or a trap at this point uh, mm. but in their mind it's it's another monster the, the the trick is though to make them understand they have to stop the ritual they have to keep it from coming in this world and not to focus on the thing <laughs> yeah because it'll just attack and dealing no damage you could also do a thing um where you have collateral damage of you know say there's bystanders at the fight so maybe it's not the the cthulian ritual thing but maybe it's something massive something bad is, atta is attacking a city and there's people that they have to like try to stave off attacks from or they're just going to die and if your character is give a shit about anything in the world that matters now if the characters don't then you just describe massacre and carnage happening in front of them so that's not a good angle if your character if the players are just murder hobos but threatening castles and and innocent bystanders is another way that they have to use some of their action economy to prevent cataclysm from happening to just people that happen to be there so now Capitalizing on both of your ideas, Out of the Abyss has some awesome, awesome demon lords that you can use in the actual book. And if we're talking epic level monstrosities and epic level powerful heroes, what happens if a handful of demon lords actually decided to put aside their differences for a moment and, you know, Drats and Demogorgon have decided that they're going to lay siege to this town. It's an affront to all the things that they that they care about and the players are, are the ones that have to stop them. I mean, like, you could go to that, that kind of length and, all right, yeah, you're dealing with two things that have legendary actions and now they're both going crazy. Holy crap. And they could summon minions that oh, just get you know, one shot monsters that just get in the way and absolutely and and having things appear in waves you know you could just like well you could just make up some some new lair actions or new legendary actions as, as opposed to doing a, a single attack it's going to bring in a horde of whatever its chosen minions are and they're going to do some damage to people if the players don't use their action to mitigate the extra minions well yeah literally that scenario is okay a triumvirate of demon lords decide to work together they see they siege this place for whatever reason you're gonna have to come up with that you know, those stories in your game and you know before they even appear they're just sending waves of demons that are actually really easy for the players to defeat but it'll just soak some of their resources before you know before prime time happens right and then the triumvirate shows up the at a main portal. event <laughs> yeah and they they show up and you know they're dedicating part of their actions to you know summoning this elder being uh, from the abyss that that even the gods you know do not speak its name and, and you could play with that and you know like i said we don't actually know how powerful these pcs are but that's the level you go to and you make this the final thing in the campaign after it's done you you just like you retire them you can give them i've we've talked about you know narrating that you know their heroes you know that the, what they would want from the game you could talk to them beforehand be like this is the last session either you guys save the world or you don't if you mm -hmm. save the world what do you want to happen to your your, your characters do they get elevated to demigodhood do they get a get, get a kingdom if they don't already have one do they get sainthood you know whatever well, that means the, the, the other option as opposed to talking to them beforehand you know, whoever succeeds, whoever manages to survive, that's where you go into player agency of like, okay, you know, this is your, this is your, uh, you know, the end of the game. What, tell me what exactly happens to Gerald? What happens to Bob? Yeah, but even if you do that, you, you might want to give them some time to think about it. That's true. So, so that you're not just laying on the spot, you know, oh, what are you going to do now? Yeah, you could like say, hey, this is what happened. We'll take a break and I'm let me know. I'm going to land. Yeah. Right. And yes, they may take player agency. And as a GM, you might be like, no, you can't be a god now. <laughs> uh, you know, so that would totally kill it for him too. So at least if this is on such a level and what they're going to have been able to achieve is going to affect the campaign world so much. I think just going player agency would kind of be bullshit. Mm. Okay. Unless you want someone to rewrite your world for you right now, because they could, because literally at you know epic levels that could be reality altering stuff at the end of that campaign. That's true. 
It would be funny if the players are just like, yeah, we just let them through. We want to we wanna just see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> like this elder guy. I've yeah, seen yeah. everything else on the popcorn. Yeah. We want to fight them, so let, come on come on through. Well, you can absolutely do that. Yeah, just in case style of Cthulhu. Yeah. <laughs> if it needs to be done. But hey, you're probably going to get some more help down in the comments below. While you're down there, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And check out the articles over at nerdarchy.com. You can tweet us over on Twitter. You can hang out with us over on Facebook. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.